And welcome back to the radio shop and another series of the FT-101 HF Amateur Transceiver. Um, I was going to do the next video on the uh, receiver, but I decided I might better point out a few other things before we get into that. And uh, I figure we just get right on into the video. So here we're looking at the bottom of the FT-101 and this is under our final um, PA section and you can see our driver tube is right down in here. Now I did mention that this area creates a lot of heat in this radio and this board is normally over top of that so it's like a little oven in there and whenever you're working on these radios it's a good idea to pop this open have a look at these resistors this electrolytic capacitor and there's a few other capacitors and things in here that we're going to look at as we can see here there's a micro capacitor right up against the uh, the side of the radio and sometimes it's tucked up under this lip depends on how long they have cut the leads on it as you can see someone has already cut this one loose probably testing it and there's been a little bit of work in here i see c109 which is electrolytic let's be like 2.2 microfarads at 450 volts this one's been changed to a 10 microfarad at 450 volt but c13 which is this 80 picofarad one kilovolt microcapacitor is probably one of the first parts I ever check along with these resistors inside these radios and the reason for that after 20 years these microcapacitors will go bad and they're short and when this happens it can cause all kinds of uh, destruction into our PA area so it's always good to uh, take this capacitor and don't even worry about checking it you can just to see how bad it's filled but you need to go ahead and replace that and I always replace them with a 2 to 3 kilovolt 82 picofarad silver dip and this is a coupling capacitor that goes from our driver tube right on into our final stage so this capacitor gets a lot of uh, a lot of heat on it so it's always good to replace it so we can see our driver tube right here in pin 7 where we come out we come across and we go through C13 which is that micro cap I just showed you and there we go through L4 and then into our final amplifiers so that you know that this is where this capacitor is located on the schematic another thing that I've noticed in this radio is uh, R12 which is your meter shunt and this is that resistor here this is a resistor that's shaped kind of like a dog bone um, ceramic type resistor that's wire around and it has about 13 turns of fabric wire around it and we'll look at that while we're in there too so looking here on our, our screen voltage comes in right here is a hundred ohm resistor half watt that feeds into our screen and this comes right on down to our 160 volts in and that resistor did not look right so when I was you know moving it around it just completely came unhooked from the grids and we'll take a look at that also so that resistor goes from this terminal point here to this point here that's where 100 ohm is supposed to be when I was looking at what was in there I found this resistor was in its place this is a 56 ohm resistor so somebody was having some trouble with the screen and to try to fix it instead of fixing the original problem they had replaced it with this resistor so we're going to put a new 100 ohm resistor in here 
and then we'll work through getting the other problems um, fixed. Now I mentioned that R12, which is this resistor here, and you can see this one is completely burned up, even though it still has continuity across it. This shows me that something awful went wrong with the tubes that was in this uh, this radio. Um, this wire that goes across here is uh, fabric coated and something has really burned it up so we're going to have to take this out and rewire this uh, resistor. Now the uh, object of this resistor is the meter shunt. When you go to IC on the front of the radio it's actually you know you can measure across here for your voltage readings. So this one as bad as it is you know it's probably zero short you know it's it's probably uh, maxed out in value so it's not going to read correctly and it's going to throw all meter readings off so we're going to have to pull this apart and rewind it with some new fabric material now one thing about this right here if you have one of these radios and receive it's always good to go from this side to this side and measure the DC voltage across this this should be as close to zero as possible what this means when this radio is in receive your bias should be turned off you shouldn't read any voltage across here if you're reading any voltage at all across here then your tubes are slightly on and what happens if the tubes are slightly on in receive mode they're going into oscillation and it's going to burn these tubes up. These tubes are getting harder and harder to get and I'm not going to get into a whole lot of it about the neutralization at the moment but there are some things I do want to get in it later and you know it's uh, the Japanese tubes versus the American made tubes as far as uh, changing out the 100 picofarad capacitor on the neutralization part. Um, let's just say it's more into getting tubes that are built alike not actually matched you, know, you can't have one brand of tube and another brand of tube we're talking about tubes that are you know constructed identically so we'll get in that later on as far as um, neutralization and stuff as we get into some other videos so uh, I have or 14 replace if you can see I put a 2 watt in I didn't have a half watt in Hunter Dome and I uh, took R12 out and uh, took the old wire off and what they actually had was enamel wire wrapped around it and all the enamel is burnt completely off of it so that was just one big short across that resistor I have took it out, cleaned it up, got all the carbon off the uh, ceramic substrate and rewired it with the proper fabric coated wire and got that in. So what we want to do now before we go any further in this radio is we're going to go from ground right here to the hot side of R12 and we're going to look at it and see if there's any voltage across this. If there's a lot of voltage across this then our tubes are going into oscillation because our cutoff bias is not uh, working correctly. So let me see if I can uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay so I had previously already checked the uh, bias supplies um, on the regulator board pin 2 you should have around 60 volts minus for your finals and on pin 4 you should have about 20 volts minus to your driver tubes I've already checked that and they are within tolerance so uh, now what we're going to do is check across R12 and see if we're drawing any current 
And to do this, we're going to be power on and tubes on. So all we're going to do is apply power. And uh, this meter will read down in the millivolt range. And that should tell us if we have any problem with uh, cutoff bias in receive mode. Power is applied to the radio. And we're measuring zero voltage across our R12 shunt resistor. So that's a good indication our tubes are not running crazy. So we don't have to worry about our tubes going into uh, thermal nuclear meltdown at this time. So that looks great. So when I look around the radio, I see another area here of interest that uh, we need to pay a little attention to. And if we look right here in this circuit, we can see our antenna trap board sitting right down here. And this is PB1116B, um, I do believe. No, excuse me, it's A. And you can see right here this coil, which is L29, is broken. Now probably what this came from was either someone tried to adjust this. Because, um, you know, I'm looking at some of the things I'm seeing in this radio. And the radio looks like it's been drove hard and uh, might have fell into the wrong hands and someone's been peeking stuff to get the most power they could out of it so <laughs> um, but you know this could easily have been broken with a screwdriver laying on the counter and someone you know took the bottom off and laid the radio on it and broke this off this is normally sticking out you know an eighth three sixteenths of an inch so it's easy for something to swipe across it and break it out now I'm going to try, I see it's cracked up, so I'm going to try to uh, get something in there and turn it and get it out and see if I can't find a new piece of core material and put in it. So I searched through about several hundred of the uh, ferrite cores that go in this and I was not able to locate one that was identical. I got plenty that are the same size same made, made up material you know with the uh, correct hole but all of them are fine thread and they're made for paper type uh, material and you know this is a phenolic type of material and it's a coarse thread so for right now I just went ahead and borrowed one from a number 101 until I can locate a source of those uh, cores the main thing is, you know, this being the antenna trap board, we definitely want this in here because we don't want to be putting harmonics all up and down the bands. Okay, so we've done a few things to the radio. And um, we noticed the other day that, you know, with everything tuned up, we've got about, probably about one, one and a half, maybe two on the S meter in the receive mode so what we're going to do now is just uh, see where our receiver's at and I'm going to show you a little something that a lot of people don't realize that happens with these radios and how to get the receiver up a little bit um, what we're going to do we're going to turn our noise generator on 100 kilohertz and with just what little bit we have done I'm going to cut the volume down so y'all don't have to listen to this as much. Zoom on the S meter. I'll reposition the radio here. And you see we're just about, about an S5.5. So we have brought the receiver up a lot. Now I do want to take the time in another video to go completely through the receiver and that's what I was going to originally do in this video but you know, I kept finding other little things I also do notice let me turn this back off for a moment that we have a few problems in this radio with noisy components now it's connected to a dummy load I think you can hear a little bit of static 
but from time to time you'll start hearing what sounds like um, lightning crashes in the background and you'll hear some other noise come in there and that's oscillating and it's just different components has gone bad so to really uh, you know to find out what's going on we are going to have to start rebuilding these boards for this radio but the good thing is we do have four other radios that we can continue on the series until I get the parts you know to start uh, rebuilding the the boards and stuff in this radio so you know you just have to bear with me I don't mind showing what little I do know about these radios but we'll just have to do it on a timely manner and like I say you know we'll jump around on a couple of the other radios and uh, check some things out and, and go through it but there's one part in these radios let me show you something here so what we're looking at here is our noise blanker board and we know how your noise blanker works your receive signal goes through this board down here on the bottom corner is a ceramic cream pot next to it is also a transformer which is T120 the ceramic T um, criminal capacitor is TC-1 now what I want to show you is by adjusting that just how much more difference you can make in the receiver okay I'm going to turn our generator back on definitely need to cut that back down some Give the part a little adjust. Check that out. Just by adjusting that, we are what about fifty of the S nine. And the deal is to rock T120 back and forth just a little bit. And that one didn't make a whole lot of difference. But you can see how just how much this uh, S meter came up just by adjusting TC-1. Um, so as far as uh, sensitivity goes, you know. to be up a little bit check the pre-select I can pretty much say that our receiver is just about where it needs to be um, very close okay so I am hooked up to an outside antenna and just listening and uh, I am picking up stations. I haven't went to the other radio yet just to see how bad it is. Um, one thing I will say, our audio level is still down. This is due to those uh, capacitors direct edits and stuff in the audio board so we're all making progress on uh, the old radio we just like I say we just got to work through all these uh, little sections and and get those caps out and get them replaced and one thing I haven't addressed on this radio yet is the main uh, relay. Now we looked at the TR relay, but we haven't looked at the other relay yet. And they can be a little booger to try to clean. Um, 
And as you know, you just can't go out and buy these relays no more because uh, what's on the market is completely different. Um, you can get the same voltage, but the pin out on the relay is a little different. So anyway, guys, there's going to be a lot of lot of videos just on this one radio. And, you know, there's just so much that's got to be covered in this thing. I can't do it in five or six videos, so it's going to take, I don't know, we probably can get 25 or 30 videos just out of this one radio. So it's going to take a, a lot of time to go through and cover each little step and each circuit in this thing. So again, you know, bear with me um, as we get through this thing. Uh, can't believe the uh, amount of responses I have gotten on this. Um, well over a hundred emails has come in asking about different things. Um, just bear with me, you know, we'll get to it, we'll get through it. Again, a big thanks for Chris for these uh, relays he sent in. That'll be a big help. And, you know, I appreciate everybody that sends stuff out and I appreciate all the comments and stuff that's left. So, Hang in there, we'll get some more, and uh, in our next video, we'll get to that receiver, and we'll need really need to do a video on the power supply, because there's a lot going on inside these power supplies, and you know, as I said before, once you get the receiver going, you've got 80% of your problems licked, the other 20% will be just in the uh, amplifier section, transmitter section itself, so... Until then, we'll see you next time. This is one of my other 101s. This is an EX. And I've been working through it a little bit off and on. And uh, the only thing I found wrong with it was the, uh, as far as the receiver, was the... Uh, RF transistor on the RF board was bad. And after replacing it, not even doing a real good tune up. To the middle size of the 3 hour 15 for 20, it doesn't use the full width. The same as the band. The band's really, really in bad shape this afternoon. There must be contest. If you notice everyone that talks uh, before you can even tune on them or have disappeared. So. Little slow scan TV. 14.333. Contest. 
You ever noticed in a contest where everybody is 5'9"? Interesting. He's 5'9". Anyway, this looks like a good promising radio here. Uh, this will probably be one of the first ones that I go completely through since it's a pretty much working radio. But still, we are faced with having to rebuild all the boys, change out the caps, do a full alignment, and uh, then, you know, go through the transmitter and see how it looks.